a real description of Amy's father, the off, uh, Suzanne Williams, father-in-law, so many others that are in our, in Rachel, so many in our church that are um, parent or um, children of Mr. Off, but um, amazing stuff. I love it. I love, I feel like I'm in the garden tonight. And Teresa, just wonderful worship just to help us enter in into his presence. So let's just... Um, Tonight is our fourth Wednesday, which we typically take a break from the series I'm teaching and do a prophetic apostolic message. And what does that mean? Well, prophetic, again, we need eyes to see. God has given us eyes to see, and God wants us to continue to understand where he's taken us. So the prophetic helps us know how we're growing, where we're going to. God is always growing his body and always taking us somewhere from glory to glory. Now, the gift of the apostolic, you know, Jesus manifests himself in five different gifts, pastor, evangelist, apostle, prophetic, and the teaching gift. And all those have a purpose in growing us up as his body. The apostolic uses the prophetic, the visual, and helps give us applicable understanding, how to take what we see and how to run with it, what to do with it. So, Typically, in apostolic teaching, you hear a lot of challenges, a lot of um, charges to the body of Christ to push the body of Christ forward in action, kind of like a general in an army. So that's what to expect when we have a prophetic apostolic service. It's just we believe Jesus is going to use those gifts to speak to us in that kind of way. So Barbara, as we know, leads our prophetic team, and she's going to share summary of what God's been speaking to our prophetic team. Amen? I'm going to go up or feel drowned with all the... I'm just one orchid among the rest. <laughs> As you know, these Wednesday night services, the... Um, Format has changed. It's now or the now the power hour, so that means our time is shortened. So what I'm going to share with tonight is just part of what was revealed in our class. If you want to hear the rest or see the rest, read the rest, you have to go to our website. So this is a synopsis of some of the words that we got in the May class. And God said there's a change or shift in the atmosphere coming. Now atmosphere is a layer of gases or air surrounded, surrounding a material body, like our earth, which is the material body, is surrounded by these layers of air, which is our atmosphere. And it's held in place by the body's gravity. So um, as we know, the earth's gravity holds the atmosphere in place. So the layers around us, as these bodies, <laughs> could be the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the world, and the spirit of the evil one. And the material bodies, of course, is ourself or praise tabernacle, because we feel most of the words that we get are either dealing with us as individuals or with us as the corporate body. So in both ways, the material body is either praise tabernacle or our individual selves. And gravity is a force, so that could be the, our soul and our spirit are the things that hold those things around our body. Now, three of the words that we got had to do with fog. Fog occurs when warm, wet air comes in contact with cooler, dry air. As this atmosphere around us shifts, fog will be formed because the air around us, the spirits, are being shifted around. The fog, I said, was mentioned in three different forms. The first fog mentioned was what I would call a regular fog. And you know how regular fog brings confusion? I remember one time I was driving over the Beasley's Point Bridge. You couldn't even see the railings. It was so foggy. I had to open my car door and follow the white line in the road as I drove along. It was nighttime. So, but sometimes you can really, it can be really difficult to navigate in fog. So it causes loss of visibility, and fog also distorts sounds you don't hear clearly. You know, have you ever been in the fog and something is really here, but it sounds like it's way over there? It just bounces sound around. 
So when we get into this kind of fog, our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears are going to become confused. And this word said that the way to cut through this fog is with the word of God. And as you speak forth the word of God, the fog will begin to part, letting you begin to see and hear more clearly. The second fog mentioned was in the form of a low-hanging cloud and represented the worries and cares of the world, which can cause us to worry and to lose our way. How many here don't ever worry? I don't see any hands. <laughs> oh, Ch Car uh, Sharon, did you put your hand up? You don't ever worry? <laughs> no, you worry. You know, we all do, but, uh, and it's because the cares of the world, are, we're letting them come upon us. So the way we handle this, according to this word, is through prayer and looking up to Jesus, lifting our eyes, because he is above all of it, right? And he says, take my hand and keep holding on to it. Ask, and the answers and the directions will come, and you will stand with him over your circumstances instead of being under them. And the third kind, and oh, then also a suspension bridge was seen going from one mountaintop to another. Now, this bridge was the Holy Spirit, but it takes faith to walk on it because it doesn't look very firm. It sort of like reminded me of um, that story you've heard about. That one guy said to the other, uh, Do you believe that I can push this wheelbarrow across that wire across Niagara Falls, above Niagara Falls? And the guy said, Yes, I do. And the guy said, well, get in. <laughs> that tests your faith, you know. We say we believe, but are we willing to walk out and step on what we say we believe? Fog usually forms in valleys. Now, when you walk on the spirit bridge, you can avoid the valleys of confusion and worry. When we walk in obedience to the Holy Spirit and not to our own will, we will be surrounded by this bright, clear light like a bubble. But if we don't walk in obedience, we'll find ourselves in the fog of the valley. <clears throat> so if the fog appears, it could be because the atmosphere around you is changing. If you find yourself confused, or not hearing clearly, or not seeing clearly, or carrying more weight of the world than you need to, you could be in this foggy area because things are changing around you. So press into the Lord and you will get through it without any negative results. The third fog that was seen was the cloud of glory, God's glory. In Scripture, the glory of God um, is often present with a cloud. You know, the, the cloud filled the temple, and God is found in the dark cloud, and he's present in the cloud. This cloud of glory was seen in praise tabernacle and came from the result of unity in worship. The fire of the Lord was present, and everyone was ignited and looking up. They, we were all in one heart and one mind in this unity of worship. The fog came, and then the heavens opened to reveal the glory of the Lord. I believe that that's going to happen. God said it. That settles it. But he didn't put a date. It doesn't date it here. <laughs> it's just going to happen. When we reach that point of unity of worship, we are going to, this fog, and I, I even believe it might be a visible fog, is going to come in, and then the fog is going to lift, and the heavens are going to open, and the glory of the Lord is going to be revealed. Amen? I mean, what Barbara was just describing actually has taken place before in different, different church services. I was actually worshiping today to um, a Bethel song that back in 2012, they actually experienced as they were worshiping together that unity, and suddenly they began to see a cloud in the building, and the, the roof was above it, so that means it was supernatural. Cloud came in. And they began to experience, um, Dr. Leon has ex numerous experiences of actually ministering in services where a cloud of glory came in and be people began to get touched. So this is not, you know, again, it's God. Can God do anything he wants? Yes, he can. <laughs> God is bigger than what we can imagine. Um, you got the PowerPoint up there, Matt? I gave you one. 
Oh, cool. Got it. Oh, there we go. So um, how many of us would love heaven to come down? That's a one we're all going to agree on, but I'm going to tell you it's not going to happen. <laughs> because it's not about heaven coming down like the, some of the songs sing, and I love all those songs. It's about heaven flowing through. Heaven already came down. And now Jesus, and now since Jesus went up, he sent us the Holy Spirit. And since the Holy Spirit is now in people, heaven is here. Heaven is with us. So talking about that unity and seeing a cloud of glory, we're waiting on God, but God is more waiting on us. So it will more happen depending on where we are at individually and corporately as we come together. That's when we really see Holy Spirit, heaven manifest. So I'm more like, let's change the lyrics again. I've said this before, but heaven flow through rather than heaven come down. So how to manifest heaven on earth is what we're going to talk about tonight. How to manifest heaven on earth. How to change atmospheres. You know, before I knew the Lord, and all of us before we knew the Lord, we were basically a product of our environment. How many of us remember that our day, either it being good or bad, depended upon our atmosphere? where we went. If we went to work and our work is a very negative atmosphere, we probably had a very negative day and negative, negative outlook. Now, I grew up in Washington State in the rainforest, and it's very cloudy all the time. It's rainy and cloudy, and there's a lot of fog in the morning. So it happens that that is per capita the highest rate of heroin use, suicide, and a lot of different things in the county that I grew up in because of the clouds. The Northwest is known as a very depressing area because of the rain and clouds, because people are moved by their atmosphere. But now that we're in Christ, these things should no longer affect us anymore as we grow in Him. Again, we're growing, so it might still might affect you how the weather is today. Today it's sunny, so you're smiling and happy. Tomorrow it might be cloudy, and then you're sad and gloomy. That's what happens to a lot of people. It's the weather can affect everything. People's attitudes can affect so much. So, God wants to use us to be people who are not affected by the atmosphere, but change the atmosphere. Atmosphere changers. So, the Bible says the kingdom, your king, it says in Matthew 16, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is God's will. That his will is, as it is in heaven, be here on earth. So his will is for you to manifest heaven on earth. The Bible also says the kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is. The revival is over there. The revival is over here. No, behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. We are revivalists. We have life inside of us. That's why we're revivalists. And because the life of Jesus is in us, all we have to do is abide in him, his life, and his life will flow out of us and touch everyone around us. So a lot of it, that, why that's not happening is because we don't believe sometimes. We lack faith. So we're going to talk a little bit more about how can we get through the fog. You know, I would drive home from the nearest town to my home and where I grew up was about 45 minutes. And we'd have the thickest, thickest fog. So people would often, and there was a lot of curves. So people get in a lot of accidents because of the fog. The smartest thing to do is what? Stay home. <laughs> if it, <laughs> you can't stay home because if, if you go to the nearest town, it's 45 minutes. Sometimes you're surprised. All of a sudden, there's fog sets in. You're, you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. The best thing to do is pull over and just wait. <laughs> we're going to get into that. But we're mentioning how fog forms is the, the warm and the cold mixing together. So what is that? What do you think of warm and cold or hot and cold mixing together? What does that produce? Lukewarm. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. So we cannot be satisfied living lukewarm Christian lives. And so what are the things that cause our life to be lukewarm? 
It says in Philippians 4, 6 or 7, as it was said, uh, Barbara was sharing about worry. We all can agree, we worry a lot. I do worry sometimes, but I don't worry a lot because I'm growing in God and I'm learning to trust him more. It says, never worry about anything. Never worry about what? Anything. 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 But in every, every single situation, let your petitions be made known to God in prayer and your requests with thanksgiving. Then God's peace which goes far beyond anything we can imagine, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So often we're stuck in the fog because we have so many cares and concerns that we haven't released to God. And so therefore we can't see the sun because we're clouded, fog up because of all of our cares. So the only way to get free from all that is cast our cares upon him. Because he cares for us, and he lifts our burdens. He removes our yokes. He gives us peace. So is this just a good hope to have? No, it's something to stand on. It's something to believe in. And another area of why we're lukewarm is, is because of impurities, impurities in our life. 1 Peter 1.22 says, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. So God's Word purifies us. Often we have worry because we lack truth. Because you lack faith. Fear, opposite of fear, is faith. Okay, opposite opposite of lies is truth. So when we have a lack of truth, usually it's because we believe lies. We're deceived. We don't know any better. So we're worrying about something because we don't know any different. So as we receive truth, we see through the lies, and now we don't have to worry because now we can trust God. So the key to coming out of the fog and getting into the atmosphere of heaven, and then now being one who, instead of being uh, moved by the atmosphere, or whatever atmosphere you're going, instead now you're changing the atmosphere wherever you go. What happened with the, um, in the Old Covenant with the box, basically the box that God dwelled in, wherever that box would go, it would bring blessing, even to the enemies, bring blessing. So we are now God's box. We're his, now his holy sanctuary, his temple, his holy of holies. We are now the place where God dwells. So now wherever we should go, we should be bringing blessing. We should be bringing heaven. So what's the first thing we need to do each and every day? Because, again, we live in this flesh, so our flesh can still, like I taught on Sunday, we can still be flesh-controlled or soul-controlled, But God needs us to be spirit-controlled. So to be spirit-controlled, what's the first thing we got to do? We got to renew our salvation every single day. We got to renew our walk every day. So again, each day you wake up, you're probably going to feel foggy. I woke up today with this, I had the craziest dream last night. I don't dream a lot. We all dream, but I don't remember my dreams too well. I had the craziest dream that went on and on and on. Even while I'm dreaming, I'm thinking, why am I still dreaming this? I was dreaming of a crazy movie that I've only seen pictures of. I haven't watched it because it looked too crazy. Shark, shark something. What is it? Somebody. Sharknado. I was dreaming of Sharknado the entire night. It would never end. It was a continual, I'm like the lead part in the Sharknado. I'm like, what's going on? Why am I seeing all this crazy shark killings and all this in my dream? Well, Val, I was just talking to Val about it, and Val said, I have a Bible dream app. And she said, tornado means, um, you know, of course, it means all kinds of craziness going around you, all kinds of turmoil and destruction and disaster and all that. And then a shark means, you know, somebody who's directly going after you or, you know, um, going to tear you down or take advantage of you or whatever. So, but in the dream, I was not affected. Everybody else was dying but me. So I was like, okay, it really wasn't that bad then. Maybe it's an encouragement for me. But there might be a lot of craziness going around me, but it's not going to affect me. Hallelujah. So I thought it was just a crazy dream. I did have pizza last night. 
<laughs> so I thought it was the pizza. But anyway, so whatever you go through at night, just know every morning we get up, we need to wait upon the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31 says what? But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. We need a renewal every single day. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Right away, now our atmosphere has shifted. We have gone up higher. We are in a higher place. We now will see everything throughout the day in a totally different way if we had not waited upon the Lord. Now we can run and not go weary. We can walk and not faint. So the first thing we need to do every day to walk in the heaven's atmosphere is wait upon the Lord. Secondly, John 5, 19 says, Therefore, in answer, Jesus went on to say to them, Most truly I say to you, the Son cannot do a single thing of his own initiative, but only what he beholds the Father doing. For whatever things that one does, these things the Son also does in like manner. So secondly, it's first of all, it's waiting. Secondly, it's hearing. Now that we're waiting on the Lord, God will begin to speak to us. Now understand, some of us think that God speaking to us is a very mis mystical thing. I know many uh, people will come to me, how do you hear from God? And I'll know people in my life that always says, well, God said this, and God said that, and God said this. You know, I very rarely ever have said God said anything. My wife once did hear audibly from God, but that's a very rare thing, and I've never heard God speak audibly to me. What happens in me hearing God is because I know the Word of God, and I'm continuing to grow in the Word of God, I have thoughts like we all have. We always are thinking. Every one of you are thinking right now. Thoughts are going through your head. How we hear from God is when we gain the ability to discern what thoughts are from God and what are from ourselves. It's that simple. Our thoughts... You know, we'll not, we'll not always line up with the Word of God, but God's thoughts always will. So because I know the Word of God, my thoughts, when they line up with the Word of God, that's God, and I just roll with it. It's not that difficult. We can all hear from God if we know the Word of God. So spending time waiting upon the Lord, God will begin to speak to us in our mind. We will gain thoughts like we always do, but suddenly we'll think, you know what? I don't think this thought is my own. I think this thought is God. And then we know what to do with ourselves this day. How do we walk? We can't, if we're going opposite of where God is going, we're not going to be bringing heaven to anywhere. But if we're walking with God and obeying what he revealed to us to do this day, we know God is with us. And wherever we go, God will bring change. Amen? So we're waiting and we're hearing, and now that we heard, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. So now we have to trust that what he said, he said. And then we've got to be confident that what he said, he will now do it through us. That's faith. Abraham heard God say, go to another place. He heard God tell him, I'm going to um, I'm going to create a nation through you. And he obeyed, and it was counted upon him as righteous. So it's by hearing, when we hear and we obey, that we're called righteous. And the heaven is now with us, backing us up, because we're being obedient. If we're walking in obedience, heaven, God, will always back us up. Next, that we've heard and we've trusted... Now we got to step out and do, step out in faith. You see that picture of one of the leading evangelists in the world, the guy who has no arms nor legs. He has an amazing platform, speaks on Oprah and all kinds of shows because, I mean, can you believe it? We have all kinds of excuses why we don't step out in faith. And this guy without arms or legs... He has a beautiful wife. He has had a beautiful child. He surfs. He does all kinds of activities because he has faith in God. So we got to have faith in God like him. 
Heaven on earth is a choice we must make, not a place we must find. Heaven on earth is a choice we must make, not a place we must find. So if we want to see heaven on earth, we make the choice to believe God, to step out, to walk with God, and we're walking in heaven on earth because what God walks with us. So in Acts 5, 12 through 16, it described Peter, and Peter, just by walking, his shadow would bring healing to people. When we're really walking with God, we can arrive into that kind of place. Who would like to get that kind of, have that kind of glory walking in our life, where we just walk and people are getting healed? It can be possible. Why not? If it happened to Peter, is Peter any different than we? Peter was an uneducated fisherman. Before he got the Holy Ghost, he was pretty ignorant. Jesus had to rebuke him for being, behaving like Satan, being deceived by Satan. So he was no different than any of us, and yet he walked in such a presence that people were healed. He never even prayed for them. He just walked by them, and they were healed. That's what we need to believe for. When, when we are all walking in that kind of place, that kind of atmosphere, when we come together, there'll be such a culmination of God's presence and his power that those who come in here who don't know God will instantly find God. Those who come in here who are sick will instantly get healed. Those who come in here who, are, who need deliverance will be delivered. So we need to stop waiting for somebody to come to bring a revival. We need to stop waiting on God to bring a revival, and we need to just be heaven on earth. And so the final picture here is the cloud of glory is moving. God's glory is in us. You and me, we are the glory of God on earth. God's word says that his glory shall what? Fill the earth. So how does his glory fill the earth? As we cover the earth, his people. So God's glory can fill this place right here and right now. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to release it to Barbara and the prophetic team to minister a little bit. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for we, you have changed our lives. We are changed people. And now, oh, Father, we are your change agents on earth. God, this world is full of darkness, full of disease, full of depression, full of anxiety and worry. People are negative. People are depressed and down. But God, we have the answer. We have the light. We have the life. We have heaven on earth inside of us. So Lord, I pray that you would manifest heaven through us. God, whatever things are uh, uh, fogging, clouding up, the reality of your glory in our lives, God, whether it be worry and fear, impurities, Lord. God, all we have to do to get clean of these things, to get unplugged of these things, is repent and surrender. Is repent and surrender. And God, as you clear us up, all of a sudden the sun will arise and your glory will come forth and shine through our lives. So Lord, we just thank you. Tonight, in Jesus' name, amen.